Well, welcome to another <laughs> of the IAFM podcast. We're here with Steven Segretario, and he is the owner of a really cool website called Speakeasy Wine Cellar. Um, and uh, we're just very excited to talk to you. I really wanted to have a glass of wine, but since it is 11 a.m. But I have this cool mug that says, <laughs> this <laughs> might be <laughs> It's actually... And it wasn't even on purpose. It was 100% serendipitous, which uh -huh. uh -huh. happy it had. Well, I, the way I look at it is coffee is wine for the morning. There, there you yeah. go. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Um, so welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Um, we love meeting new people. We love learning about you and your business. Um, and I, I would just love to like, just start with getting, um, a little background on you. I mean, I, I was briefly going through your site. Um, you mentioned you have 20 plus years, uh, in the wine industry business. So tell us a little bit about, um, you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> 20 plus years, they call it dragging the bag. <laughs> um, oh boy. Starting all the way back in 2000, I, I worked part-time at a, uh, a, a local package store, just stocking shelves and, um, just as a side job weekends and nights and, um, was a teacher at the time. And my, my family got involved and we, we, uh, ended up doing a store in Monroe, Connecticut. Um, and we did that for a little over three years and that, that was, and I was still a teacher for most of that. Um, what was, what was I taught in Fairfield of all places. Did, did you? you really? I did. I taught it. Well, it's it, the school. It was a Catholic school. It's called Holy Family. Yeah, of yeah. course. Did you, to, Father Norm, right at Holy Family? Oh God, you're. I don't remember. He's a um, he's a fantastic human. <laughs> either way, he's a fantastic human being. My mother uh, will be nine years in January. Died of ALS, and uh, unfortunately, there was this an issue with the church that my parents belong to and father norm stepped up yeah um no as a contact that. from a, a local uh funeral homeowner here kevin lesko and stepped up and did my mom's funeral for uh, saint thomas so yeah it was uh holy family yeah it there it he's a great dude so yeah no it, it was well that was a lot of fun and a great experience i was so young i was fresh out of college um but yeah, so we had this liquor store and um, essentially uh, it was me and my two siblings running it. Um, and um, <laughs> well, under the under the guide of my parents, of course, you know, but uh, <laughs> my brother, my brother decided he wanted to do something else. And um, we're kind of a very traditional family. So my sister at the time uh, got pregnant um, with her first. And uh, so my parents like, well, you're not allowed to work anymore. And, you know, very you know, very not 2023. And uh, so then it was me. And my dad said, well, do you want to just do this? And I said, sure. And so I started, and I was in, back then I was into uh, craft beer. I was into craft beer before craft beer was craft beer. And um, so I just fell in love with wine and and, and really enjoyed it. And uh, the reason we sold that store um, was because I met my wife and we live in the Waterbury area and that's where I, I, I still, I live in Middlebury. And um, so I couldn't kind of piece it together that uh, working all those hours and then driving 40 minutes home every night, you know, wasn't a way to start a marriage. So we were, we made the tough decision and, and we moved on from it and the guys who bought it have done great things with it. Um, and they've, they've done a really good job. And, uh, but then, so then I left, I left owning a package store, a wine shop, if you will, and, and, uh, and going on the road for 19 years. And that's what I was saying, dragging, dragging the bag. So somebody has to go into all these accounts and, uh, present wines and talk, tell about stories and all that kind of stuff. So I did that for, for a long time, driving all over New England, three Subarus dead in the water later, um, Kind of got, yeah, no, terrible. I mean, I don't think I paid any, I mean, I paid them all off, but I I think every car died before it was done being paid for. I mean, we're talking 200 plus thousand miles. Oh my God. It's a good Uber, I guess, right? 200 plus thousand miles. I mean, it, I beat the hell out of those cars. I mean, you know, um, so yeah, so I did that. And then I just kind of, the wine world that changed, um, on me 
and this is kind of what leads me into doing what I'm doing today. Like I, I, I got into wine because it, it, it was fun. But that, that's, it's really simple. It was, it was really fun to be in the wine business 20 years ago. And um, that over time has changed. It, it, it became more corporate when you, when you were selling a product and it was, it was less interesting. It was less about who was making the wines and what made them interesting and more about just cases and numbers. And it didn't matter because I ended up working for a fine wine company. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, yeah. pick on anybody. I'm not going to name and not going to name names if you will, you know, but uh, you know, so it, it got to a point where I was like, you know, I, I need to move on from this. So I did. And my wife was very supportive and she said, just be patient and, you know, find something that you're interested in in doing and and this place uh, so i'm in southbury and the the funny thing is when i first sold my when we sold our first store the store i'm currently in was for sale and oh, we okay. almost bought it 20 years ago oh that's why yeah uh, and uh it just it kind of fell through at the last moment basically because i was uh i was young and i didn't want my parents help and the bank would not allow me to a loan of the size on my own and uh, so I said, well, I don't want to do this without with with my parents putting their neck on the line, so to speak. I want to do this on my own. So then I, I shifted gears. And then here we are in 2019. It's like this thing falls in my lap, essentially, because the, the previous owner had gone out of business and there was a, just an open permit. So I just kind of walked through the door, which was really kind of interesting. Again, serendipitous, my favorite word. Yeah. Really is my favorite word. So. so you obviously you have a physical location. Yes. Um. Do you also? I obviously I was scrolling through the website. Um. Is there something that you also deliver to people's homes, like if they order online and do delivery? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, we are. I say we. It, it, it's just a way to describe your business, right? I, I'm not doing this completely by myself. I, I do have my wife who does help out. And um, I have a, a, a part-time gentleman who comes in who has like 45 years in the business. He was the uh, a, a GM at Carmine's in New York City, he owned his own restaurants. He loves wine too. And, he, and so I have, he's actually right. I'm at my shop. I don't keep this many wine bottles just hanging around at the house. So I'm at my shop. And he's actually here um, so I can do the podcast and okay. not get interrupted by customers, which is great. Um, but yeah, so so I say we, we this is kind of a this is kind of a, um, not an experiment, but we're, we're, we're launching ourselves and, and uh, it's a, it's it's uh, I don't have to. Uh, it's basically chaotic, but it, it's 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 controlled chaos, if you will. So. World yeah, I, I, my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have ADHD, so <laughs> I. <laughs> it's terrible, but it's great at the same time. There are some days where I can do almost anything, and then there are other days I, I don't even want to get out of bed. You know, during but, COVID, um, in my house, I built a patio. I was like, you know, I had. Yeah. I mean, I was also living my own worst hell, being stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> so it was I had no other choice. But yeah, there's some quite a lot of benefits to uh to ADHD if you harness it correctly. Yeah, I agree. Like I'm I'm sure like something like that. You built your patio, it took you four weeks, but you only worked like four days. Right. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I sat there happens to me all the time. Just one brick wouldn't go where I wanted. So I spent three and a half days trying to make it a skew enough to satisfy my OCD. Have you ever built a website? That's what yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you because my 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 website is uh, it's a WordPress site and I I had no idea what I was getting into and yep. um, wow WordPress um, WordPress is a whole other beast of a uh... and I I'm a designer and so I and some of the stuff I do is website design and I I feel you I yeah. don't like WordPress and i tend to stick to like squarespace specifically just because it's more user friendly and like once from I'm a done, handoff perspective i can hand it off to someone and be like you can you can do go this. do this <laughs> you'll be with, okay with confidence. i actually don't mind wordpress but i have like these moments where i'm like just go over there i just want you yeah. there like, like move two inches like next i don't understand why that can't be <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly your window's broken you're like oh great uh, yeah. 
So yeah. Speaking of your website though, I do, I do love it. I love one thing that struck me first is how much your personality comes through. I'm trying. I'm, I, it's so funny. Um, my wife, uh, she was, re I'm just, so uh, the website build is, is taking me since January. And I, there was a snafu where I pretty much had the whole website done, um, in April. And then I lost all of my writing and I couldn't get it. So I had to really kind of nuts and bolts it in May and June um, and get it back up and running. And then the e-commerce part started in August, uh, July and August. And so, and then I've been just kind of putting it back together. So there's not a lot of write-ups on it right now. And it's funny because my wife is like, well, why can't you write more? And I'm like, it's not like I can just sit there and spew it out. Like, you know, I, I have a good memory for wine and I remember a lot of the stories, but I have to kind of remind myself. So that's research and then rough drafting and then writing. And then she goes, well, the descriptions are kind of long. I'm like, look, if you go on and on, on almost any other wine website in the market, you're going to get either very, very short personal descriptions or you're going to get a copy and paste off of the wine's actual website. So yeah. there's like no personality in the wine. So like every what what we're doing a little differently, there's a couple things that we're doing differently at Speakeasy Wine Cellar. One, if it's on our website, we own the product. So we do not have a virtual inventory. A lot of websites that you'll go on and like, wow, they have all these wines. No, the truth is they don't have any of those wines or most of them. They just drop um, it. Their wholesalers have it. And so then you go order it and then they order it and then they send it off to you. So um, we actually have what I, in, in my about page, we have like an intimate relationship with the wines that we have. So, because we've, we, we know the pedigrees and we've tasted the wines and we've experienced it and we've actually put our, basically our stamp of approval and not that it's like, that's the end all be all, but I want to kind of come across as more of like, Hey, this is, these are wines that we feel have character and soul. And those are things that I feel like a lot of places um, just kind of gloss over. So I appreciate that. I, I feel like, you know, um, one of the, one of my biggest pet peeves and um, slightly different from the, the restaurant angle, even you know, a restaurant, it has a wine listed on their menu, even right. And I go to order it, and they're like, "That's all right." It's like, you might try this, and I'm like, "Why do you have it on your menu then? If you can't stand by it, why is it on your menu?" Uh, yeah. You know, cost the <laughs> care. Like, just don't. You know, don't. Just don't do that. So I really appreciate that, that you you actually take pride in the stock and the inventory that you Where when I was share. when I was a waiter, I'd be like, they're like, what do you think of this? I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the same because I what most of my uh, 20 years of, of being a sales rep. I was a I was an on premise guy. Yeah. So I, I did a lot like, with restaurants. He just himself stepped on the grapes and <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's an unusual process. But we were able to bring it to your table today. <laughs> and I understand that it's forty eight dollars a glass, but trust me, you'll be as close to God. And, there, and there's no server program on it. I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to get like a hundred dollar gift card somewhere if I sell the most of this this week. Exactly. You know they, I mean? they did not just tell us that whoever sells the most wine this week is getting a two hundred and fifty dollars spiff. But yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, but but that. I, I mean, being on that side, that was something that I always tried to encourage. It, I never did two hundred and fifty dollars because I couldn't afford that, of course. But <laughs> Um, but I always was like, oh, you know, because it, it's hard to get somebody in a restaurant to to sell something interesting. Sure. A lot, a lot of times consumers have a predetermined notion of what they're looking for. Um, and in our wine culture in America, it's it's mostly grape related and then brand related. So it's it's uh, well, do you have uh, people a lot of times and this makes my skin crawl when I'm in a restaurant. Somebody's somebody I'm with says I'll have a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon and I'm like. Any cap doesn't matter where it's from. Like, do you care what it tastes like, or we just have it like a delivery for alcohol? Is that what we're looking for here? I mean, because moonshine in a glass, right? I mean, it's like I, I don't care as long as you tell me that that glass that you're going to give me is, is Cabernet Sauvignon. It could be nothing. It could be Merlot. <laughs> it could be Malbec. It could be anything else. But you're going to tell me it's Cab. Yeah, you know the thing. I'm good. 
like all jokes aside, like when I, and I was a waiter, I worked in the restaurant business most my entire life. So, you know, I would try to educate myself on wine to the best of my ability, just so that I could speak to it. Right. And have a general, oh, yeah. general understanding of, you know, what I'm selling. And, you know, also, you know, I think it's important to have a little bit of a foundation of wine etiquette because you will get working in a restaurant, you will get someone coming in who will try to one up you or, you oh, know, yeah. you know snakes in the grass correct correct my favorite was the ones who would order the the bottle of wine that was out so they would expect the next bottle for the same price which is my always it's a it's a great move <laughs> I, I have a, an extreme uh, knack for finding the wine on the list that that was probably put on the list when they first started the restaurant and they sold out of the three bottles they bought and they it took them like a year to do it. And then they're like, they forgot that it was even on the list. I'd be like, Hey, that looks really interesting. Let's have that. We don't have that, you know? So yeah, like... restaurants are great. I mean, I go out with my friends and they always hand me the list and and I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Sometimes though, I, I hand uh, them back the list and they said, well, what do we have? And I said, well, I'm drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love wine, but I'm not just going to, just drink wine just because it's wine, you know. Um, wine is like a fantastic. I, I like wine, but if you drink too much of it, the the revenge of wine is not my favorite. <laughs> it could be like, yeah. And is it something? To do? I mean, I I know nothing about those details, but like, does it have something to do with sulfites or something oh. like? What is that wine headache everyone talks about? I have friends who like, you know, take the sulfites out if it doesn't have, or like it's just all this whole big thing or does it have to be organic to, you know, not give you those headaches sometimes? Like, is there any input there? So I'll, 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 I'll first I'm going to just extract sulfites. Uh, sulfur dioxide is a natural product. It's a natural thing. Yeah. So let's just start with that. And anybody who's, and first of all, allergies to sulfur dioxide is very, very, very rare. Yeah. And so anybody who says, well, I'm allergic to sulfites, I, I say, okay, that might be true. I, I'm not going to say you're not, but uh, do you eat bacon? Do you have raisins? How about French fries? Canned tomatoes? All of those examples of, of products that are consumed everywhere all the time have like, 50 plus times the amount of sulfur that a glass of wine has. Okay. Wow. So it's usually not the sulfur. It's usually the histamines in the wine that will make you, uh, uh, you know, have a reaction to it. It's rare that it's the actual sulfur. Um, but anything's possible, I guess. Right. Um, and, and as far as organic, not organic, um, we have kind of a term in, in the wine business. It's, it's like clean wine. OK, so um, when when you're when you're producing a product, uh, a wine uh, vineyards, really, you're looking for people who are who are going to pay real homage to the land. Right. You're looking for people who've either owned the land for a long time or have a, re a lot invested in the land. Um, what makes wine interesting and great or one of the things that makes wine interesting and great is the soil that it comes from. So the, the, the better you take care of that soil and the less that you impart on it in terms of. of you know, pesticides, herbicides, chemicals, the better run you're going to have in that vineyard. Um, and this is actually something that's done in a lot of places now, especially in Europe. Um, the, you know, there's crops planted between the vines to, to because every, every plant takes a little bit different pro, um, minerals from the soil to live and puts other things back that other plants take. So it's it's like a, it's a little ecosystem, you know, in the vineyard. Um, so it's not just that we need to feed the vines um, because in, in reality, stressed vines, vines that don't get the nutrients artificially or even water artificially generally produce the best grapes. Okay. So uh, if, if a vine stresses, so if, if a vine's like in Shangri-La, right, and it's like having the best of all the world, it's getting fed and watered, its rootstock is not going to go very deep because it doesn't need to, right? It, it just, it doesn't need to develop. And what it's going to do is it's going to produce what they call the canopy, which is all of the, the, the leaves, the green in a vine. It's going to produce a lot of that. Now, the, the entire, if you're looking at the psycho psychology of, of a vine, a grapevine, its whole purpose in life is to produce fruit real fruit. 
So, but if you don't give it, if it doesn't stress a little bit, the fruit that it produces is going to be most likely copious and not very interesting because it's just going to produce a lot. It's just going to keep going. Huh. Um, but if you stress the vine and you give the vine just enough to survive, it's going to seek out other areas of nutrition for itself. And it's going to shut down growing extra leaves and extra, extra grape bunches. And it's going to put more energy into that. It's, it's like any other plant you grow. Like I, we live in Connecticut, right? Have you ever tried to grow like a rose bush in Connecticut? It's like nearly impossible. Like this thing is like, like you get one rose, right? That sticks out of the ground and it's perfect. And the rest of it looks like it, you know, like, what did you do? Do you prop it up out of a dumpster or something? Cause it's like, it, 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 it growing it is so difficult and then vines are kind of the same way. You have to, you have to give it all like a, just enough stress to be productive, but not too much that you, you're under stressing it. So it, it's not producing quality. It's producing quantity or nothing. Yeah. So. We, have, we have a grapevine in our backyard that are old, the people who lived previous to us, the old owners had or whatever. Yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll produce my own wine. You could sell it and it will just, <laughs> it will just give people a headache and we'll just call it Connecticut. <laughs> I love it. You'll just get it. You'll just drink it. You won't even, yeah. you won't even feel good. You're just literally going to get a headache. <laughs> You're like, Oh my God, this is really like, yeah. Connecticut. This is <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like what it's like to live in Connecticut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's, it, you know, Connecticut, like, I'm t talking about local, like local wines, people always ask me, well, are there any good local wines? There are, there are, I'm not going to name any specific ones because I don't, um, I, I can be honest with you, the wines that I've tasted in Connecticut, there are some good producers. Um, there are some producers who are clearly, I mean, the Connecticut wine laws are, are really geared towards more of a, um, an economic boost for the wineries and, and the wine trail and all that, because our, our, our climate in Connecticut is changing. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we have, in my humble opinion, because this is just my opinion. This is not like nobody, I'm probably, you know, like this, this might, we might get like thrown off the air for this one, but like, in my opinion, like, Connecticut doesn't have a really good, uh, you know, ecosystem for of terroir for growing real grapevines, sure. and I, I think we need to embrace. There's there's two strains. There's Vitis vinifera and Vitis labrusca. The labrusca is more um, localized grape varietals that we don't recognize. Um, like the grape varietals we recognize: Cabernet, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir. That's Vitis vinifera. Um, the grape varietals of Labrusca, not to get too crazy. I mean, we're going off really well off the rails, but <laughs> um, but th those are the grapes that are more localized. Uh, they 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 kind of work in this area, but they don't produce wines that we can recognize as much as commercial wines and from around the world or California or whatever. So they're a little harder to sell. Gotcha. And if you're a wine enthusiast. You have to be kind of really have an open mind when you're when you're going to taste those grapes and those wines. Wild. So yeah, I actually don't sell any wine from Connecticut in my my shop. That that's all right. I don't take offense. I don't either. <laughs> so my go-to on buying wine is yeah. I, I shop labels. Oh yeah. I am like you probably hate? your like your antichrist because <laughs> I. I'm like, you know, I, I, love, you know, I love labels. I, yeah. I can't help myself. They, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, the label's there for a reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Right? Um, and I, the way I look at uh, any consumer that walks through the door, I, I've had some kitschy labels in my shop, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at this label. This is terrible. But, it, the, but the wine, it, at the end of the day, the, the wine in the bottle is good. Um, <laughs> and and it, it, it's a spectrum, right? So, like, what what is your expectation when you go shopping for wine? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a price point? Are you looking for a certain flavor? Are you open to new things? And there's all these factors come in. And uh, one of the things, I mean, I'm six foot two, two hundred and eighty five pounds. So I'm, I'm this, I'm, I know the picture probably doesn't do me justice, but I'm, I'm really like I stand over a lot of people, so I try not to be intimidating, you know. Um, I am Greek, so I'm opinionated. So that's a problem. But, but the truth is, is when people come in my shop, um, I, I just ask questions. Sure. What do you need? What do you want? I mean, 
if you're looking for specific things, then, you know, I can kind of like ask you a line of questioning, not to guide you to what I want you to, to buy, but more to guide you what I think is going to fit you the best. Um, you know, so people come in, they ask for certain brands and which I don't stock. And I just, I said, well, if it has to be that there's, there's another store right up the street, you know, nice guy. And I, he, he's, he's got it. You know, I guarantee, I don't even have never been, I've been in the store once, but I can tell you right now, he's got what you're looking for. Yeah. But if you're interested in learning or tasting something different, let's talk about where you want to be price wise. Is this just drinking? Are you having food with this? What are you eating? Those kinds of things. And so we can go down a, a myriad. So like, if you say like, what are you having for, what'd you have for dinner last night? It's a really great question. Oh, we just did. Uh, it's not a good example. We did like example. cheeseburgers. Oh, oh. <laughs> what are you talking about cheeseburgers? Cheeseburgers? I drink wine with cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, How about pasta though? What are you drinking with? Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to go back to the cheeseburger thing. <laughs> wine and cheeseburgers is fantastic. It's really good. Really? Oh God, yeah. All right, so um, breaking barriers here. <laughs> what? It's if we're breaking barriers here. Oh yeah. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> the world is our oyster. But so, did you make the burgers? We did. Yum yum. Okay. What'd you put on it besides cheese? What kind of cheese? Uh, just American. Oh no, cheddar. Oh, American cheese. Yeah, no, that's even better. I, I'm not an American guy. I mean, I'm American, but I'm not an American cheese guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, American cheese is the hot dog of the cheese family. Did you know that? I just I don't it. even think it's part of the cheese family. So my favorite cheese is basically <laughs> a dumpster cheese. <laughs> like, <Okay. laughs> but if you were having burgers with with cheddar cheese and fixins and all that, um, what I would recommend is like, look, wine goes with almost everything, and and so when you have a burger and you have cheese and you're you're probably putting. I don't know if you put ketchup. Some people put mayo. I personally, when I have a burger, I don't put any of that on it. I just have the burger with the, the I'll garden. Go with ketchup. I'm, or, or maybe, yeah, I'm not, I'm a purist in including pizza, right? Like, like cheese. Cheese. <laughs> okay. I don't need like a song and a dance. Hold on. Let's see if I have something here that I can point to. No, I don't have it here. But if I were having that and I was going to have a, a glass of wine, with that i would do probably something from bordeaux and something relatively simple not like a big chateau uh you know first second third fourth growth or or you know a grand cru grand cru classe from the right bank i would just do like a simple little like 10 12 13 dollar bordeaux basically red alcohol juice you know <laughs> But it, but, but see, like, because when you're doing that, like, you're just, it's, it's just the combination of the two. And you want something that has a little bit of earthiness to it, which Bordeaux is known for. And you want some backbone, which is Cab Merlot. Um, but then you want fruit. And those, those less expensive Bordeaux wines just crush it, in my opinion, with burgers. I, I, I love, I love Bordeaux with a good burger. I really do. It's, it's a, it's a good way to go out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Kind of a last meal thing. Well, let me tell I you, I, I, I was, I was, I've, I've been, I've been coming to the, you know, coming to um, terms with middle age and content, you know, and I was talking with Paolo, like, I'm like, God, I just don't want to get old, you know? And I'm like, you know, if I'm like in my eighties, like, just like roll me out. You look good just, for 80. Right? <laughs> I'm just like, roll me out in like a wheelchair and just like, let me just like whack out terrorists or something. Like, <laughs> die in the hospital or anything i just want to be like i want to just be like you know let's then you know i'll be here and like, there you go yeah there, exactly <laughs> as i mentioned these podcasts can go anywhere and you've come from yeah <laughs> hey listen you know we, we're we're into selling wine and fighting terrorists i'm in um so oh question well, if you don't mind go for it yeah so we were kind of on like you've obviously educated us a lot on the versatility it's all fake i'm making it up as i go whatever <laughs> don't tell them that don't tell them that just go with it <laughs> oh, up. um i remember seeing your um wine uh the wine school the speaking oh yeah wine school is that something you're still doing oh yeah oh yeah what's um, that so 
Well, yeah, thank you for reeling us back in because <laughs> we, were, we were off on some, we were going to some strange places there. Okay. I, I'm good with it, but <laughs> yeah, wine school. So it's kind of, um, this is the long version of the answer. I, spending so much time on the road, one of the things I really enjoyed was teaching people about wine. Um, both cu customers and their customers, so cons the end consumers. And when I did Speakeasy, I decided that one of the things that could set us apart was holding a wine school. Um, and and in reality, it I'm happy when people come to the classes and they taste the wines and they buy them. I mean, I'm technically a retailer. So the end game is, yeah, I need to make some money. However, for me, like, I really enjoy the interaction with people who are enthusiastic, right? Wine is such an intimidating, for some reason, it's so intimidating in terms of what it is, pricing, uh, the social aspect, right? You know, like, I like this. Well, I don't like that, you know? And then now you're like, oh, do I say what you're drinking is not that good or, you know, it, it's like, how do I feel about wine? But when it, in reality, what it is, is what is wine, right? It's, it is, it's not how you feel about it. It is what it is. I always say when I recommend a bottle of wine to somebody or even in wine school, like um, what was the last one we did, Oh, we did Italian varietals 201. So like I'm a huge Italian wine fan. I love Italian wine. Um, but I, in my experience, like I get a little bored selling Chianti, Sangiovese, Nebbiolo, even though Nebbiolo is my favorite grape. It, you go along this path and you say, oh, I know what Valpolicella is. I know what Nero Dabla is. I know what these wines are, but nobody else may know. So to me, it's second nature, but to everybody else, it's like, what the heck is that? You know, like, I don't, True. Like, I don't I, know what that I, is. I know I like certain wines. Like, right. the... Like I'll ask for a multiple channel all day long, but do I really know what it is? No, I just know that I like it. <laughs> right. So, so I'll present, so in the wine school, I present usually six to eight wines. Yeah. Um, and I, once in a while, and I've got a couple of regular students, um, yeah. they're, they're the noisy crowd. They come to drink, you know, <laughs> but, and I love them because that's, I, that's, that's the spirit animal that I need. Right. But so, but they'll be like, oh, I didn't like that. And my response to them is always the same. That's okay. I didn't make it. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but wine is like, kind of like fashion, right? There's a fashion for every person, Yeah. you know? So everybody's got their own style and wine is, is there's no, just because somebody who you revere and respect and like as a friend or a, or a family member or even like a boss or something, just because they like something doesn't mean you have to like it. Um, so there's, and, and and that's like such a cyclical thing, just because it's an expensive bottle doesn't mean you have to like it. Just because it's inexpensive doesn't mean it's a crowd, you know what I mean? Like there are things that we have to be able to like let go, right? And, and realize we have our own, we have our own palate. We have, like, it's, it's no different from food, right? I mean, it's like why, some people eat green beans. Some people don't eat green beans. Do we judge them because of it? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I hope not. The most polarizing groups I've ever witnessed on Facebook is the Pizza Holics group. I don't uh, know if you're a part of that. It is. I've seen, I'm not part of it. I, I've seen it. It is like absurd the amount of energy that people put into like anger over. Yeah. Pizza. And I worked in pizza for a very long time, and like, dude, like. Pizza is supposed to make you happy. If someone <laughs> wants, I mean, I like you know, do I want pineapple on my pizza? No, I mean, I think it's sacrilegious. But like, I'm not going to judge someone and tell them that they're an asshole because of it, which I see on Pizza Holics like often. Which is, can I tell you a little dirty secret about me? Is that I've never had pineapple on pizza. I and I, I'm 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 like nervous to to try it. Yeah. Like, just buy a damn pizza with it on it and try it. If you don't like it, throw it away. Like, I, but I won't do it. I, think there's some, I just don't like, a like mental it. block. It's yes. like, quite honestly, I just don't like it. Like, I mean, I if you want to put, it. at the end of the day, if you want to put pineapple on pizza and you like it, like, life's short. Enjoy yeah, it. Right. Who cares, man. Who like, cares? like I have, like my problems are so far greater than someone eating pineapple pizza. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's so funny what people get angry at. So I have a really. With the holidays approaching rapidly, and we got Thanksgiving in like a week and a half, which is 
insane to say. It's like tomorrow. It's two uh, weeks from today, actually. Bananas. Yes. I, I know. Not right. So, with that said, what are some, like, cool recommendations for bringing wine to, like, your Thanksgiving family? Or if you're alone eating a turkey? <laughs> Well, my, my, I have a few rules um, and they're not really rules. They're just more like suggestions. But the first thing I would say is drink what you like. Okay. I like it. it, it it's a holiday. It's a day off, right? Uh, just because a certain wine doesn't pair perfectly with Thanksgiving dinner doesn't mean you shouldn't drink it. Because if that's what you like to drink, drink it. Thanksgiving is is a is is a really um it's 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 kind of like a it's a difficult meal to pair mostly because the bird the turkey is it's kind of the how do I put this it's like the least flavorful thing you're going to be eating right i mean everything else has flavor yeah. so cranberry sauce you got high acid in the cranberries a little bit of tannin i don't know how people do it's like stuffing stuffing you can have any number of stuffings, I and mean, there's chestnut stuffing, sausage stuffing, the old Italian meat stuffing with the pignoli nuts, you know. So there's all these different kinds of things. I mean, my mother used to make about four or five stuffings because everybody liked a different one. You yeah. Know? So and you wonder why I'm as big multiple, as I am. We would have multiple different <laughs> stuffings because one would eat this, the other yeah. one wouldn't eat that. And right. So yeah, and then you have, you have obviously you have the gravy that goes on the turkey. So all these things are bringing different components, right? Yeah. And so basically what I try to do for people when they're they're asking for Thanksgiving is I try to um I try to give them like, hey, here's here's <laughs> here's something that you know is not gonna offend and it should pair well with XYZ. It may not go perfectly with cranberry sauce, but it'll pair well with everything else. Or because there's in my opinion, there's there's not one like the one perfect wine um, is, is probably Riesling. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And a, and a lot of people uh, get nervous when that that word that that grape comes out because like their mind is like it's it, it's it's a sugar pop you know like it's just it's basically simple syrup in in wine form it, but it, it is good it's delicious but there there are so many bad forms of Riesling on the market. Um, you need to find something that has a little bit of acidity and balance and um, it's not cloyingly sweet because otherwise all you taste is the sweetness. But um, and I, I understand a lot of people are oh, uh, not going to tell you, you know, not going to touch that, you know, okay. You know, so Riesling is a, is a fantastic example. Gewürztraminer, a lot of people can't say it. Uh, that's another white from Alsace, France um, that uh, would go well with Thanksgiving. Uh, Oaky Chardonnay. Is a good one. The white wine sure. as a whole, do you think? White no, wine. I'm done with yeah. No, there's there's some reds. Um, so for reds, uh oh, I have one here. Can you see that? Yes, this yeah. is a Beaujolais. Um, I'm not a fan of Beaujolais Nouveau, um, just because I think the wines are too simple. It's an old tradition. Um, and I think they're kind of rushed to market. There are some that are really good out there, but for my for my dollar, I'd rather buy something like that. That's like a twenty dollar Beaujolais, and it's it's for me. It's just it's got more action going on. And if if God forbid you buy too much wine for Thanksgiving, which some people do, and you have it left over, uh, the wine will it'll it'll last, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so Beaujolais is great. Uh, Pinot Pinot Noir is another good red. Um, classic uh, Zinfandels. Uh, American, you know, it is American holiday. American Zins go great with Thanksgiving. Um, you. So those are that's kind of where I go. Um, on my website, I think I have a, I, I set up a um, a uh, a six pack that you can buy. It's I'm thankful for wine Thanksgiving, and it's it's six wines, three reds, three whites. Some of them are out of bounds wines that just uh, that go wines to pair with your Thanksgiving dinner, um, and it's 165 bucks. And then I have another one. It's uh, I'm still thankful for wine Thanksgiving six pack, but I'm saving for Christmas. And I have this kind of the same version for seventy five dollars, you know. So, I um, because I realize not everybody can spend one hundred sixty five dollars on six bottles, but it's so you have, all, it. you have already curated the wine in these packs, and then one hundred percent. That is awesome! Oh my gosh, for anyone listening, 
please. This is <laughs> incredible. I love that idea. I love it. And you also have, I saw on your website, a, um, a wine club, right? Yeah. So the wine club, so the website, wine, right now I have a, 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 a um, it's, God bless WordPress, right? Um, so right now I have a, a speakeasy wine club membership. Uh, it's I call it Wine of the Month Club. Um, I'm having a hard time translating it to the web because um, I'm not a, a webmaster or something. But <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I, I I think I have to change the parameters on it. Right now it's it's basically a year long subscription. You get a bottle every month. Um, of our choosing, you don't get to say, oh, I only do reds or I only do whites or whatever. It's like, nope, you, you're going to just get what we give you in, in, a, in a nice way um, because we want to expose you to new wines. And if, if you're kind of hesitant about getting in on the club, you could just go to the wine of the month tab on my website and every wine of the month we've ever had is on there. So it's like a lineage and we write it up and, and that's how you get it. And then you get discounts. Like we have a dinner, a wine dinner that we're doing in um in december at uh, a restaurant called roma in oakville and we're doing right. we're doing a wine dinner with angelo gaia he's not going to be there of course but um when we do wine dinners we don't mess around we it's more about education and it's about the wine so you're going to get four courses and you're going to get eight wines and you're going to have a side-by-side -side pairing so angelo gaia is known for Piedmont production and Tuscan production. So you're going to get three Tuscan wines and three Piedmont wines with the, the pasta course and the main course. Um, and, and what I've been telling people, and it's $250, which seems like a lot, but that's all inclusive. It includes tip, tax, Pellegrino, 50 espressos if you want them, um, you know, because you might need it afterwards. But what I tell people is, is like, look, this is an opportunity to taste some really great wines. If you were to buy a bottle of each, it would be about $900. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. What, uh, where is Roma restaurant? Uh, that it's, you uh, it's just north of Waterbury. Okay. So from Fairfield, you'd, you'd go up Route 8 about a half an hour, and you get off on the north side of Waterbury, and it's two minutes off the highway. It's a, there's not that many seats left. I think I have six or eight seats left. Um, get in on that, people. It's on December 6th. And yep, we'll that's on the website as well. You go in and fill up. Uh, you fill out the thing on the website. You pay for it, and you pay me. Um, that's how I, I'm able to do, to run these. Um, so it's not a reservation with the restaurant. You pay. You go to Speakeasy Wine Cellar. You buy your ticket. It guarantees you your spot. Do you that. have any um, relationships with restaurants out our way? Working on it. I mean, I do because I know a lot of those people. We would love but... to facilitate that for you too, as well. So we'll talk offline or in in a couple. Sure. Of we yeah. Well, what, the, the whole concept. So part of what I do with Speakeasy Wine Cellar and why I'm doing what I'm doing is I'm, I want to come to the customer. Yep. Uh, physical location is fantastic. And, and I enjoy having a space and it's, I really like it here. But I want my customers to basically just call me up and say, hey, I'm looking for this, this, this and that. And I said, no problem. And I bring it down or up or wherever, you know, and I, I, it is a small operation. I, you will get, it's funny. Uh, you will get me pulling up to your house or your office, you know, and I'll be like, hi, I'm Steve. I'm from the, the, the podcast. Steve. Remember me? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully one day I get big enough. I can actually hire somebody, but, uh, you know, I, I will make it happen. I, there, where there's a will, there's a way, right. You know, like the world if, if you're, you're looking for wines with soul and you want to buy from me, I'm, I'm really happy for that that we make that connection because hopefully I can get to learn you, your palate, what your likes and dislikes are and you know, uh, cater to you. During the holidays yeah. with the holidays coming up, um, obviously going into December, you know, do you, I'm assuming you do gift, gift bags or baskets or whatever. Yeah. So um, I'm, yes, we have, we have a, a two pack of a, a four pack and a six pack a carrier holder that you can totally customize. So if, if you have, if you're a business and you have 30 clients and you have a budget, I mean, I can work within your budget and we can, we can give, do whatever you're looking for. You could spend as little probably as, you know, on two bottles of wine, $25 and you need 50 of them. No problem. If you, if you want to have a, you have a large budget, which I hope you do, uh, you know, and you want 
two bottles for a hundred dollars. No problem. You know, we can, we can handle that. We also have boxes. We wrap with the, the little, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the shredded paper or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the terms are. And, and we, and we, my wife is an expert bow tire. See? Yeah. yeah. Little plug for the wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Without, without her, this wouldn't be possible. So. <laughs> No, I love it. I, I love that you have something for Thanksgiving. You're thinking about the holidays, even that membership, the subscription thing. That's kind of like, you know, almost like your fruit of the month. It's your wine of the month. Um, That could also even be a gift for somebody like, oh, oh yeah, would appreciate that gift. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Like I would be amazing. Right. Like oh, I yeah. love to try new things. I know we're telling our, our dog. Our dog. Um, okay. Also, just to to make sure we have it all right and proper is there a particular way that you like people to contact you better is it through the site calling you emailing you? right calling email smoke You're signals all... whatever is necessary um, oh so speakeasy wines where did the, the name come from <laughs> my <laughs> brain i don't know like honestly well but the whole the whole impetus of the store so the store was supposed to be and, and i and I, i'm gonna say this as nicely as possible I wanted to buy a small, like in the hood package store selling like nips and single beers, not necessarily Lucy cigarettes, but like, you know, that's what I wanted to sell. But in the back room have some really cool wines and events and sell everything online. Um, but this place came back to us, like I said before. And when we came here, I had this, this, idea in my head right and so i saw the place and i'm like oh my god i remember this place i'm like oh no this is in my head i'm going this is not what i'm looking for and my wife is like this is perfect <laughs> so uh you know and not that she convinced me because i wanted to do something and and it, the whole the whole way it worked out was just it, it ended up being perfect and she was right again so <laughs> That yeah, but that's so that's how we ended up. But that was the whole concept. It was supposed to be like I was going to be like uh, you know Main Street package store or something, and then in the back, Speakeasy wine cellar, and you know so that this this just kind of came the way it, it just ended up being like this. Not to add any more to your list, but maybe some pop up Speakeasies I sense in the future. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean I. I'm as energetic as people are. If, if you know, I will go. I will go. You want me to come to you, do a tasting at your house? Just call me up. You want to go to a you know a private room in a restaurant? I'm there. You want me to to throw a big bash? I'll do it. You know, I, I'm I, I'm looking forward to because a lot of this is is what I want to do is exposing people in comfortable settings to wines that they may or may not uh, be uh, be used to consuming. So. Part of that is after the first of the year, um, I'll, I, can I give a plug to somebody? Absolutely, yes. of course. Okay, so I just met uh, Stevie Sacco from the Bevy Company in Southbury um, just yesterday, which was great. We had a little collab going, um, making a, a cocktail with wine in it, which is something, it's like kind of like sacrilegious to me, but I, I was cool with it because the wine actually, it tasted good. So I'm, at the end, it was good. So that's all right. But she does, she did a really great job. And and she has this uh, this little, uh, she calls it the Bevy Co. It's kind of a tapas restaurant. Uh, and it's a late night tapas restaurant in Southbury, which is less than 200 feet from my store. So we kind of talked about it. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that next year we could do like a series of tapas wine dinners there. So it's, you know, like, and, and just introduce people to different foods and different wines and, and just in a comfortable setting. So that's 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 our basically what we want. We want people to try new different things and, you know, not I mean, we have everything I, I, every day to the exceptional. Right. We have we have everyday wines. We have exceptional wines. I believe it or not, find a lot more pleasure these days. I don't know if I've been consuming too much wine um, and, and the wines that are a little more simple and I don't have to be patient and wait anymore. I can just drink them. So the, the wines are generally are under $30 are right in my wheelhouse these days. So I'm, I, I like last night I had this little Devois de Perret. It's a little Southern French Languedoc red, no Oak, really simple. 
but I crushed the bottle because it was delicious. I mean, it was like I couldn't stop drinking it. You know, I was like, what the heck am I doing here? And it just kept go- like it was on auto sip, you know, like I couldn't stop. So like, but like, I don't have to think about it either. I just drank it and I was like, wow, this is really good. And I woke up this morning without a headache. Even better. So there you go. There Listen. you go. <laughs> the, what, um, what do you do outside of wine? Like outside of work? What do you enjoy <laughs> doing for fun? Uh, uh, drinking wine? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, well, I mean, I, I work a lot. Um, but when I have time, and a lot of people make fun of me, I'm a golfer. Sure. I like to play I like to play golf. I like to torture myself at least uh, eight hours a week on that. Um, good thing is that I have a good group of friends who like to drink with me when I'm playing bad golf. Do you drink wine while playing golf, or do you keep, like keep, keep it straight to like cocktails and beer? Well, I'm not going to say that I haven't had wine while I played golf before, <laughs> um, but it's a lot easier to drink beer. I was, I was <laughs> or co- canned cocktails. That's can certainly cock- easier. <laughs> it's really hard to hold the stem and swirl with the cart <laughs> going, you know. It takes drinking and driving to a whole new level. Oh, okay. It's a hell of a <laughs> ride. <Yeah. laughs> oh my god! Well, it's amazing Absolutely. chatting with you. Thank you for making the nope. time. Um, no, thank you for having me. It was this was great. This, this was a this lot of fun. Great. Um, you know, make it very clear. I, although you're up in Southbury and we're over you know, in Fairfield, you definitely do deliver. And that's very clear on your website as well. Just for those yeah. who are looking for eclectic wine bottles or just your run of the mill, you know where to find yeah. it. You know where yeah, to find it. So it. Yeah, uh, right here. It's awesome. So delivery for your home, there, if you're having a party, events, yeah. gifts, obviously Steve has yeah. your back. And I love the vibe. I'm not just saying that. No, I love yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, well, listen. Hey, listen. And you guys, you guys, it's really what you see is what you get. And that's what you, that's how I am. So. Yeah. No, I, I, well, you know what it is? I, I learned a lot when I was in sales for almost 20 years. Somebody said, uh, you're kind of like abrasive sometimes. I said, look, I, I can't, I try to be nice and a chameleon to every account, like what the account needs I provide, <clears throat> but I can't lie. Because I can't remember all the lies. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. So, like, I learned a long time ago that if I'm going to make up stuff, I have to, like, it has to be, like, long term. And it just doesn't last. I can't yeah, remember it all. Energy. I'm, like, I'm, I'm yeah, a bad person that would give me an ulcer. <laughs> and, like, because I would, it would, like, the guilt would would bury me. And I work in sales as well, like, in a corporate world. And um, it gets you nowhere. Yeah. Hundred percent. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather piss people off with the truth. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or at least my version of it, right? Like how I see it. Of so course. at least I know where you stand. Otherwise, it's like, oh, too much, too much to remember. I got no time for that. And, and people can read through it too. Like you, they, yeah. people can tell when you're just being genuine or just being honest and presenting yourself that way. Paolo, you got to talk to my wife because she would say yes. Because <laughs> when I when I'm clearly not amused by something, like, and I have to be there. I have the hardest time. I mean, I'm a jovial person. I mean, I am fat. So like, it's like, you know, you have to, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, like you have to like have this personality. I, I, I have some gummies for you that could, that could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, paranoid at these events wouldn't be good either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you know, she's like, Steve, you've got to like learn to like, at least pretend, you know, like you're, you're not, ticked off you know like i can't we were talking to someone and they were like oh where you you know where where are you gonna be for halloween i was like i'm gonna eat a gummy and go as happy (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good that's pretty good first part was i wasn't kidding (laughs) that's exactly i don't think that's the worst part that's the best part actually (laughs) but anyway we really appreciate your time so much and um, thank you very much for having me Appreciate um, it, guys. Next time we visit, my niece lives up your way, so next time we go and visit her, we'll swing by. We'll give you the heads up, though. Awesome. Yep. For sure. Awesome. Very good. All right. Thank you. Great seeing <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.